251.9 million years ago, the Earth experienced what was the most cataclysmic event ever to occur that brought the beginning of an entire new era. Most of the life on Earth perished in this mass extinction and makes all other extinction events pale in comparison. Despite the destructive nature of this, life would find a way to survive and begin a new set of creatures and ecosystems to take over the world. But to explain this to you, we must go far back into the past, long before the infamous disaster occurred. Looking at the geological timescale shows the differentiation between periods and eras in time. We will be starting this journey in the Carboniferous to better understand what life was like during the Permian. The Carboniferous was dominated by lush tropical ecosystems very foreign to what was typical in the Permian. Trees were not even trees, but tall ferns creating the first forests. Giant arthropods roamed the land bigger than any insect seen today, and amphibians were prominent over the reptile-like animals. These reptiles were more closely related to modern-day birds, reptiles, and mammals. However, this would not last forever, and the collapse of these animals and environments soon followed. After this, the Permian distantly resembled the Carboniferous. The supercontinent Pangaea had turned into a dry landscape with only small pockets of the once abundant tropical forests. The reptiles from the Carboniferous branched into two distinct groups, synapses and diapses, these were the groups that started species that we see today. The difference between the two is quite simple. They have a different number of holes in their skull. Synapses have one hole behind their eye, whereas diapses have two. And the diapses represent the lineage of mammals, whereas diapses represent reptiles. In the Permian, synapses diversified into many species that held dominance over everything. The diapses diversified alongside them while not having as big of an impact. Throughout this period, synapses began to look more and more like the mammals people are most familiar with today. And in the oceans, there was abundant diversity, whether it was pre-existing species from the Carboniferous and before, or new species paving their own way. This era began with the Cambrian explosion and ended with the most devastating mass extinction. During the end Permian mass extinction, or commonly abbreviated as EPME, sampling suggests as high as 96% of marine animal species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrate species went extinct. The most influential triggers of this event are evident with increasing CO2 emissions, loss of oxygen, which is known as anoxia, carbon dioxide poisoning, rapid global warming, and most importantly, volcanic activity. The eruption of the Siberian traps has been the most notable and well-accepted theory for starting these climactic catastrophes. But what was strange is the fact that the Siberian traps are not even on a fault line. However, volcanic episodes were possible because of something called mantle plumes. Mantle plumes are areas where magma rises and breaches the Earth's surface. The magma from these plumes began the steady increase of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, which led to global warming over the course of a million years. Terrestrial ecosystems faced immediate problems with acid rain killing off plant communities, which caused substantial erosion from the lack of root systems, along with wildfires and deforestation from arid conditions. Marine ecosystems encountered ocean acidification from the large influx of CO2 and significant anoxia in the oceans. The most influential downfall that happened in the oceans was the loss of its biological pump. The biological pump allows for a carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to be drawn in. However, with the overwhelming amount of CO2 going into the atmosphere, the oceans were unable to handle this and the collapse of biological processes and ecosystems started to occur. Even with seemingly impossible odds, organisms held on and had a new start in the Triassic. The recovery period after the end Permian mass extinction lasted into the Middle Triassic, which means the recovery stretched over 10 million years. There are three factors that I wish to focus on for there being such a slow recovery post-EPME. Intense environmental conditions, ecological strategies, and poor functioning ecosystems. Severe environmental conditions such as anoxia, ocean acidification, 
and volcanic activity persisted sporadically throughout the early Triassic. The reoccurrence of harsh conditions after the EPME significantly slowed the recovery process of life during this time. This is apparent during the early Triassic because ecosystem reconstruction in favorable conditions took between 1 and 2 million years, opposed to the recovery of some ecosystems like marine taking 8 million years. When looking at the ecological strategies of organisms, it can be broken down into two significant groups, R selection and K selection species. R selection species have high birth rates, endure changing environments, and experience shifting food resources. These species were able to appear sooner following the EPME because of their quick adaptation and rapid growth. Today, these would be organisms such as dandelions, rabbits, and bacteria. K selection species are the opposite. They have lower birth rates and live in consistent environments. These species allow for greater competitive ability, but didn't appear until later in the early Triassic. Today, these would be organisms like elephants who take nearly two years to develop and give birth to their offspring. Looking at the two groups shows a delay in early recovery of complex ecosystems because of the dominance of R selection species had over the ecological diverse K selection species. The lasting harsh conditions from the end Permian mass extinction and low biodiversity created poor functioning ecosystems. These ecosystems remained immature and susceptible to extreme conditions, which resulted in a slow recovery. In addition, there have been many studies that came to similar conclusions for the recovery patterns during the early Triassic. The evidence of abnormal sedimentary features shows a loss of certain species like the essential coral reefs and a lack of coal deposits on land from continuing environmental conditions. Another indicator of harsh conditions having an impact on recovery during the early Triassic was in the plant kingdom. There were rapid changes in terrestrial plant species throughout the early Triassic, meaning something forced them to adapt quickly. Scientists recognized that over a 2 million year period a variety of plant species experienced a stress mode in those environments. Plants, the producers, are the base of every ecosystem and without them providing safety, energy, and nutrients, other species cannot develop. So if plants spent 2 million years slowly establishing, then the rest of life was going to take even longer. The end Permian mass extinction took the thriving ecosystems of the Permian period and left it unrecognizable in the early Triassic. Life would slowly recover over time from repeated environmental stress. During this, then surviving organisms would diversify and become familiar groups such as mammalia, which are host to modern day humans. Extinctions play an important role in understanding the past. They leave scars on the earth for us to find and explain. Many of the events from the Permian mass extinction can be found in other mass extinctions as well as smaller ones. And the most interesting part of this is that we can use this information to predict our future. This is why studying mass extinctions is so crucial because they teach us how the earth has handled past stresses and what will happen when it becomes too much. Thank you for watching the video. I enjoyed being able to take a biology paper and turn it into something bigger. This video was inspired by Paleoanalysis, GeoGirl, The Budget Museum, and Benji Thomas. They have amazing videos that cover topics just like this, so make sure to check out their content. Also, I'd like to acknowledge these four scientific papers that helped me understand the science behind the Permian mass extinction as well as the recovery that took place afterwards. If you're interested, all these resources will be listed in the description below. <clears throat> you didn't hear this from me, but you can get free scientific papers if you search Sci-Hub on Google. All you need to do is copy and paste the DOI number from a paper and put it into their database.